Hello and welcome to Humanity. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are hanging out at Pam Tunzi Lounge. This place is so lovely. Having a cup of tea, some biscuits and some uh, cake and bread. It's looking good and we're having a good time. But I'm very excited for us to hang out today because we're meeting someone that I really get inspired by. I look at her and I'm like, wow, what a success story. And I think someone that I would love for everyone to meet. My whole hope is to expose us to people that can inspire us and to life-changing stories. Let's jump into our chat today with Teresa. Teresa Pondo is actually a name that I think some of you have come across, but at least a face that I'm sure you have seen on your television, on social media, on billboards around the country. This girl is a uh, a part of a group called Zatu Band, at least their first uh, uh, people that went into that band. But her story, her life story is very inspiring. So I thought, you know what, let's let's have a chat. So thank you so much for coming in, girl. Thank you. I'm so happy that you're here and you look so lovely. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. And how great is this place, right? This place is beautiful. I love it. I was like, how come I didn't know about I this know. place? Oh, you're here now. We'll come yeah. and have another cup of coffee another day. Yeah. But let's jump into your story, mm -hmm. girl. <laughs> pregnant at 16 yeah and now you're married with another baby yes. how old are you now i'm 25 so 25 two babies a businesswoman yes. a musician you have traveled the world representing malawian girls yes. and really carrying the torch you have an amazing singing voice uh -huh. and i always say it's hard to come back from a, a bad situation yeah and pregnancy teenage pregnancy yes. especially how was that for you Okay, for me, um, wow, teenage pregnancy was very tough. It was a situation where I, I thought, okay, this is, this is it, my life is over. Like mm -hmm. from here, I don't think I can. It was very tough because, I mean, as soon as I found out I'm pregnant, I'm thinking, my friends, what are they gonna say? What, what, my that was mom. your first thought? I'm like, what no, are you thinking about I was 16, parents? I was 16. <laughs> so you know, you're like, okay, my friends. Because I'm thinking school, right? Because yeah. I had just finished my IGCSE Form 5. Yes. So okay. I had to go back to Form 6. So now I'm thinking, okay, my friends, my teachers, my mom. Oh, okay, my, my siblings, church, because I was in praise team. Yeah? Like, I'm, I was... Like, you get all these thoughts. Like, you don't even yes. think about the baby. It's uh -huh. like, everything else is shattered. Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, God. And, and then later, my, my, my sisters found out, and they came to me. They, they had to speak to me. How many sisters? Do um, you have? Okay, so I have how many sisters? It's it's hard because I grew up in a family of seven. Yeah. Five girls, so five four <laughs> sisters and two boys. Uh -huh. Yeah. So two of my sisters came in. One of my sisters was was out of the country. She was in Malaysia in school, yeah. and I was supposed to go there for school. Oh, so that was the so she was like, oh, when is Teresa coming? You know, yeah. she kept asking my mom, and my mom is like, girl, she's pregnant. Oh lord. Yeah. So she she was crushed. Everybody was like, oh, what are we gonna do? And then, but my sisters were like, you know what? You're not the only one to get pregnant at 16. Mm -hmm. People will talk. You have to accept that, okay? But you're going to have to accept that you're pregnant uh -huh. and you will be fine. Uh -huh. And honestly, those words, like I still remember them until today. This mm -hmm. was my elder sister. They kept me going. They kept, kept me going even when people said bad things, like people wrote about me on social media, like my name and all these things. And I was like, okay, what? I was just laughing at everything because I'm like, okay, this is my situation. I'm going to go through it. Yeah. But then I was thinking, okay, so what happens after this? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, what happens after the baby comes? What, oh gosh. But take me back to how you found out and yeah. then how your mom found out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so basically, I knew I was pregnant because I was like, okay, yeah, I just knew, but I was in denial. Yeah. So I went to Malaysia because my mom was like, okay, you have to go to Malaysia to search for like the school that you're going to be in. So I went to Malaysia. Pregnant. That Yeah, I went to Malaysia a week pregnant, something like that. And you already knew. I, I kind of knew. I didn't have a test, but I knew because I missed my period and I'm like, okay. You know, and my sister's like, oh, we have to go and buy pads and everything. When are you starting a period? I'm like, oh, maybe next week. And then that's when I was like, okay, I have to get out of this place because she's going to find out. So I didn't yeah, even tell her. Yeah. We were like close. We're like, she's yes. like close. But it was just hard for me to, mm -hmm. yeah. So I didn't. I stayed in Malaysia, I think, for a month. I came back and then I was like two months pregnant. Clearly, three you months. never considered abortion. I did. 
I did because I got back and then I told my cousin, I'm like, yo, I think I'm pregnant. Okay, so buy me tests because I can't go like <laughs> I can't go like people know me in shops, like my parents yeah. and everything. I can't go. So go and buy a test for me and then let me check. And then by that time I was three months. Oh girl. And then I I checked and you weren't showing. Um when I'd lie down my stomach would like have yeah, a hump. That's that's when I knew. Yeah, I was yeah, I was yeah. tiny. Mm-hmm. So I, I found out now I'm like, okay, I need to get rid of this thing. But I, I don't believe in abortion. I don't support it. Uh-huh. But in that moment, you don't think about anything else but to make it right. Like you think that removing it is a solution, but it's really not mm-hmm. because the situation has happened. Mm-hmm. So now you're just trying to control the consequences of your actions and, and you, mm-hmm. you, can't, you just have to let it flow. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it's happened, it's happened, you accept it. Now you have to say, okay, so what am I going to do with yeah. this pregnancy? And mom? Did you so, tell her or she saw? No, I didn't tell her. So now I'm trying to go to hospitals to abort. I went to a clinic and I'm, I'm there and I was like, forget it. I ran out. I couldn't do it. Oh, wow. No, yeah. I couldn't. So um, so a certain girl at the house knew and they told my aunt who then, oh, I don't know. It, 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 it all of a sudden got to my mom. Yeah. But she, she didn't. But I, I know my mom knew because she looked at me and she's like, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. But I, I know she knew, but she was just trying to, Maybe she was also in denial about it, but but she she was the kindest to me. Like she didn't say anything. I think that's what hit me because it's like she didn't say anything, and I'm so like, so was this good or bad? Yeah, and I'm like, okay. And she was like treating me like she was giving me everything I wanted. What do you want? What do you need? You know. And that period, I was so alone. I was so afraid. Mm. I was even sleeping in the room with her because I was like, I, you know, I, it was just. A dark moment you know and she was just there with me the whole time and my sister had to come back from Malaysia uh-huh. and that's when I was with my sister more you say you shared a room with your mom in that time yeah tell me a bit about the importance of the support system that you have yeah. around you because yeah yeah exactly that becomes a problem mentally yes emotionally it affects them yeah how did that support, yeah. and I mean sleeping in the same room or yeah. the same bed, yeah. sometimes you need your family. You honestly. do, you do. How did that help you to move on to the next stage? Well, I, I, I think for me, one, because, so I was sleeping in my mom's room, now the baby's born, now it was my mom, my sister, and I taking care of the baby. So wow. we'll give each other shifts, yeah. right? So I would take like the night shift. No one wants to stay up. <laughs> so <laughs> you're going to stay baby. up. Exactly. So I was staying up. And then at five, I would give the baby to my sister. And then she'd be with him in the morning. And then my mom would be with him in the afternoon. Yeah. So I think that's support because that's how I was able to go back to school. That's how I was able to concentrate because I had help around me. Yeah. So, but, so if you don't have help, if you're like kicked out, take care of this baby by yourself. Uh-huh. It's harder because... What, what's worse is when they kick you out and yeah. send you off to the... The family. same. Yeah, I mean... And, and you're not even home. ready for marriage exactly. or anything. What are you doing? So you're going to get another pregnancy... <laughs> It's just, I'm it's just sort this issue and we create another problem. Yeah, yeah. So I think I think that support is what helped me. My mom is the one who encouraged me to go back to school. Mm-hmm. You know, she was oh, like, "You're gonna go back to school. We're gonna take care of the kid for now." Yeah. And so I was um, in boarding in Blanta. Mm-hmm. I, I live in Lilongwe, so I was in Blanta, and I'll come back every two weeks just to see how my son is doing oh. and everything. But yeah. that support, the support helped me. Yeah, it's so key. You yeah. Know what? Uh, we'll take a break. Let me tell you, Teresa has traveled the world. She's traveled the country. Mom, on behalf of Teresa, thank you for what you did. And sister, that support system is so key. Yeah. It is everything in coming out of that hole. Yeah. So we're going to talk about the other side now. Okay. At 16, that's what happened. But what happened next also? Because this was important. It's part of her story. But I want you to stick around so that we can talk a bit more about where she went from there. Guys, guys, I say Trust me, I say Ziguila. I say. Okay, I say you want. Trust me, you want.
Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is Womanity, and we are chatting to a very well-established young woman who is doing well, and she's got such a story. And I have to say, we're just talking a bit about the support that you had yeah. in the time that you were pregnant at 16, but yeah. your family was there for you, which is so key yeah. to come out of a dark place. Yeah. You can't survive in that dark place on your own. Unfortunately, a baby is a good thing when you get pregnant out of wedlock it's almost damaging yeah you know but yeah. how you handle yourself and how those that surround you handle the situation yeah can pave a way to a brighter space true how then do we move from uh pregnancy now you're in school and you i think we were chatting earlier and you said you went to school because mom wanted you to go to school yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so I finished my IGs, my IGCSE just before I got pregnant. Uh -huh. um, and then that's when I got pregnant. I had the child and then I waited a year. And then my mom was like, hey, that's the time um, Malawi College of Accountancy just introduced like their first degree programs. Uh -huh. So there was business management. And I've always been interested in business, yes. right? From high school, like I did business studies and I was like, oh, this is so cool. I want to do business, right? So, so my mom came with a newspaper. Hey, you have to go go apply for this and you're gonna go to Blantyre. What so, was your plan? So I, d I didn't really have a plan. Uh, you're just thinking I'm breastfeeding at the moment. I wasn't even breastfeeding. <laughs> I didn't. No, yeah. What? Okay, well that's a story for that's, another day. Exactly. So, so my mom is like, you have to go for this thing. And I'm like, I don't mind. It's not like I hated school. I yes. liked school and yes. I wanted to do business. So I'm mm. like, okay, cool. I'm gonna do that because mm. it's business management yeah. and entrepreneurship. So off I went. I went to school and um, it was in Blanta. And that was my first experience away from my family. So I'm the last born. And when I was um, younger, I always wanted to go to Kamuzo Academy. Like all my siblings went there. Yes. Right. I actually was in school with one of your siblings. Yeah. So yeah. So it was my turn and I'm like, oh, I go write the entrance exams and I pass. And, and I'm like, whoo, I'm going to KA. Yeah. And my dad is like, where are you going? You're going to stay here. You're the last born. You're going to stay with mom. I'm like, oh. Yeah, so I I never stayed away from my family, mm -hmm. so that was like the first time for me yeah, to be independent. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you then do your school and you graduated. Yeah. Just recently, though, right? Yes. A couple of years ago. Last year. Last year. Yeah. And congratulations. Thank you. Because then you do your education, and then how do we get to be a part of Zatu? Okay, so so what happened was um, I was in school in Blanta, then I transferred here because mm -hmm. I got in a car accident. That's another story, like a whole other story. Yeah. I got in a car accident, so I had to transfer back here in Els. To be close to your um, family. To be close to my family. Okay. Yeah. And then um, that's when I started out trying businesses. Um, and I, How then do you have a business mind, though? Because I, I sometimes I feel like entrepreneurship, honestly, yeah, yeah. it's either you're kind of born with that inquisitive <laughs> trying to make money type yeah. brain, yeah. or you get the realization that you need money to survive. So you start trying to it find It was both. Ways. It was both. <laughs> yeah. So been interested in business, as I said. And then, so my dad, my dad passed away like uh, 12 years ago. Um, but he left um, like old mutual savings for us and then it matured and then it was, you know, my time to go and get the money. Uh -huh. So I was like, and then we had also been renting another house that yes. my dad left and it, you know, we had some money. I would receive my portion, everybody received the portion. Uh -huh. And I would just be buying heels and buying this and the money would get to zero. And I was like, I'm done what with this life. life. I'm so yeah. done. I don't want my money to, you know. Uh -huh. Not have anything. Yes. So when I got this old mutual money, I was like, okay, I'm going to start business. Okay. I need to start something so that I can get some money. I want yeah. to make money. I want to be independent. I was just so, and it was like an anger. It was like something that I was so determined to do. Uh -huh. Right. Uh -huh. I traveled to Garonga with two women that I don't even know. I mean, I know them, but not like no, know them. Yeah, yeah. And everyone was like, no, but you don't know them. Where are you going to stay? What, what I was, was like, Garonga though? The rice. I bought rice, Kilombero rice. Uh -huh. So okay. the best one is yes, that side. Of course. Yeah. So I went all the way that side and we had, it was like a three day trip and we didn't even have transport back. It was hectic, but I was like, I need to make money. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And then I bought chickens. Right I tried there the, with you, honey. <laughs> I uh -huh. tried the chicken business. I was just trying all these things. But the idea was, look, I'm growing up. I have this boy. 
I'm doing business studies. And when I was in school, the guy was like, the lecturer, he said, you guys are not here to graduate so that you can get a job. You guys are here to graduate so that you can create jobs. So that was You in need my mind. to say that again. Yeah. <laughs> he said, y'all are not here to graduate so you can get a job. Mm -hmm. You guys are here to graduate so that you create jobs. Thank you right yeah so that right was my man mind that was the first year so that was my mindset ah, like okay we're doing this to yeah to create jobs yeah okay and i've never been one to to think oh i, I want to work mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. I've, I've always wanted to do business Beyond i'm what, not a, i'm like, not against working but that's just been my heart yes right so i'm doing all these things and then i see an advert searching for talent can you sing can you dance if you can apply and on what's happening singing forever i've been singing you know i was in praise team as i said yes. um and i'm like okay let me try this out some mm -hmm. someone from church was actually like oh you, i think you can do this yes. and at first i was like everybody was like oh what's this you know everyone was not taking it seriously mm -hmm. but i was like okay maybe let me try this out yes i auditioned next thing i'm selected okay come for live auditions and performing and and drama and i had never done like radio drama uh, right yeah. so it was something new for me and i was very whack <laughs> so but, radio drama is different because you're acting yeah, with your voice with your voice and you're acting as you read it out mm -hmm. so it's not like you've memorized it and then you're going no mm -hmm. and it's jijewa yeah i mean yay <laughs> <laughs> no it's like so hard so so i was like I was threatened because I'm like, I thought I'm just singing. Yes. One, I didn't know it was a competition. I was actually told it's like a church choir. So you, oh, you sign up okay. and then you're going to be in a choir yeah. and, and you're going to be paid. I'm yeah. like, oh my I God. Like that. Yep. And I get there, it's different. Uh -huh. You have to dance, you have to act, uh -huh. you have to sing. But I did it. I'm like, okay, whatever, let's do this. I did it. Um, I got selected, like 14 people. Now let's go to the next set of rounds. And then did that. And then we're in this band. And we didn't know what it was about. And then that's when they explained to us, okay, so this is and the idea. And it's a big deal band. Yeah. This is the idea. going to be a youth brand. And this is what we want to do. We want to yeah. inspire people. And I was like, because taking you back, I was pregnant. I gave birth. I, I went back to school. I'm doing business. I'm like, oh, so everything that I thought would happen didn't happen. Why do, why do we fear having a child? I'm not like saying go and have children no, no, as no. teenagers. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> And that I said, is so, yeah. And I said, I need to tell girls, I need to tell teen moms that it's okay. You're okay. You're fine. You can, you can still continue. You can go for your dreams. And, and then Zatu is like, okay, you're going to be a, a character and you're going to be a teen mom. Did you, okay, because I was going to ask you about that. Yeah. In Zatu, you did have a baby, which yes. is real life story. Yeah. <laughs> did you know this beforehand? Did they know your story? Did, like, how did that even happen? And how did it feel to live out your life yeah. in a drama? Yeah. Okay. Did did I know? No, I didn't know. Um, I think they, they were still creating the characters. Yeah. So when I went to audition, they asked us, like, give us a little background of yourself. So I did explain I'm a single mom and I, I, I'm doing business and I'm in school. So they did have like a background to my story. Yes. Um, but then now they introduced this character to me and I was so excited because now it's not like I'm acting. You get it? This is like I'm just expressing myself. Yeah. So it wasn't hard for me to do what I had to do mm -hmm. as a character yeah. in the drama. It was something that I was really relating with mm -hmm. and something that like I was burning to tell teen moms and I was I was given the chance to do that. Yes. You know. Yeah. Again, I love how you say you were happy to now share with the teen mom that it's fine. Yeah. You will make it. Yeah. And the world didn't fall apart. It didn't. <laughs> like because you think it will. I yes. can't explain the, all these thoughts that just come flooding. It's yeah. over. It's like, oh, oh God, gosh. I can't explain. I and can't I, explain That's such it. a bad place to be in, yeah. being pregnant as well. Because yeah. as, as you're pregnant, and I think your mom used wisdom. Because yeah. in that time, that's such a fragile time. Yeah. You want to be in a happy space. It's yeah. good for you, good for your baby, good for yeah. your mind. You're growing a whole human, yeah. Lord. Anyhow. <laughs> So let's now talk a bit about how you then moved on to traveling the world because you're now doing this Zatu thing. And yeah. there's so much on your social media that shares about the places that you've been to. Yeah. How was that experience for you? It, it was an amazing experience. Um, it was experience, an experience that showed me that your story can be used, you know, and it can travel around the world and 
impact lives around the world. You know what I mean? So for me, I, when, when something happens to me, anything negative, I'm always like, this can be used mm. for glory. You know, so, wow. yeah, I went to Netherlands. It was an uh, international AIDS conference. Um, that was such a great conference. Um, I went to Canada. Um, um, I went to Abu Dhabi. And what I went to Abu Dhabi to do was basically, I was just, um, I gave a speech to the deputy CEO of Gavi, um, just talking about the vaccination programs in Malawi with the children and my experience. And because of that, I went to Canada to share the same thing and how we're using like innovation with Girl Effect to, to target our audience yeah. and the girls, you know, using music, using drama, using something interesting to actually share an important message. Yes. Yeah, so Girl. for me, that was grace. Yes, mm. yes, all the way, yeah. all the way. You need uh, something bigger to hold you, honestly. So grace is the right word. What businesses did you get into? Did I or am I in? At the beginning, you did the Ooga, yeah, I did, the chicken. Yes. Did that stick? No, <laughs> it didn't stick. Yeah, and then? It didn't stick um, because then I got this Zatu thing. It was of a full-time okay, thing. And yeah. I was doing the rice thing alone. Uh -huh, so I didn't develop yeah. it to get people to, get, you know, I didn't set up the system that can the business can work if I'm not there. Uh -huh. So that collapsed because uh -huh. I'm, I'm doing school, sun, Ugh. all these things. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, so now I meet my partner, my husband, um, and we started doing business together. Yes. We went into Jigayo. Now I do Jigayo. We have Airtel Money um, with my sister. We've partnered up. We're doing property Rent, rental property yeah so basically at a house we just renovated the quarters and then oh, yeah okay yes thank you for sharing how you're making your money because sometimes <laughs> we see people and we're not too sure how yeah. they did it yeah but thanks for opening up about that and i think maybe one day we'll chat a bit about like setting up all those yeah. little as you say structures that actually make it work yeah because initially Zampunga yeah. so that had to stop because you were alone yeah. but now you have partners people yes. that you're working with and people yeah. that you've employed to keep the machines yeah, sure. going mm -hmm. as they are different things yeah. but i am so proud of you Every time I see you, I am older than you, so sometimes I feel like big system <laughs> yeah. uh, feel. But so proud of what you're doing, so yeah. proud of where you're going. How have you handled yourself with social media? Because as you said it, <laughs> when you were younger, yeah. there was all this talk online. Yeah. Now, before the wedding, yeah. there was all this talk on... Hashtag Earth. 10 things. <laughs> it was, it's Kunogo, it's America. I'm like, what and, on Like Earth? Jamaica, I couldn't Jeez. believe it. it. I was like, news. guys. Yeah. Kenya. It was everywhere. I'm like, it was okay, everywhere. This is too much. How do you handle your heart? How do you yeah. protect yourself, your mind yeah. and your heart? Because I think when that gets hit, yeah. then yeah, you it's collapse. problematic. Yeah. Okay, so for me, I have a specific uh, thing that happened to me. Do I share it or do I not share it? Hmm. I wasn't prepared for this. But um, what happened was I was, mm -hmm. what do I say? Let me just say I was going through a personal, um, I was going through a personal issue in my life mm -hmm. that affected my relationship with God, mm -hmm. right? So I, at that moment, before the 10 things happened, um, I felt like God was not with me because of what I had done. So um, I, oh, it was this big issue. And I went back to the Bible and I read a verse that said that do not be afraid because of them. Um, Deuteronomy 31 mm. verse 6. I am with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and very courageous. Do not be terrified because of them. Right? So I read that and I'm like, okay, God is telling me that he will never forsake me. So I started meditating on that. Mm. He will never forsake me. What does forsake mean? I googled it and I'm looking at all these words. He will never cast you away. He will never leave oh, you. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, okay. God is not man. Yeah. God's reaction to our sin or shortfall yeah. is so different yeah. than how a human would Definitely. Take it. You did well to focus on that. So I get that and I'm meditating on that. I'm like, okay. And that's what I needed. I needed God on my side, mm -hmm. right? And he tells me that I'm on your side. Mm -hmm. Now, two days later, social media blows up with this thing. Mm -hmm. And I go back to my Bible and the first verse is, do not be terrified because of them. Oh. Be strong and very courageous. Yeah. I will never leave you nor forsake you. And I was like, Hoo -hoo! if I have God, I'm good. Even if the whole world is against me, I'm good. That's what kept me going. That's what I can say. Honestly, it kept me going because God showed up 
and showed me that he's with me. And that's, 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 that's my motto, that if I have God, because God makes you a king. He's the one that lifts you up. He's the one that pulls you down. It's not the people around you. He uses people around you, but God is the thing, mm. right? So if you don't have the thing, you're finished. So even if you have the thing and 10 million people are against you, that doesn't really matter. We will be back with this one. <laughs> Because we've got so much to chat about and I think yeah. we've got so much to give. Yeah. And there's so much to dig into. Yeah. And as you've put it, we, we had uh, Dr. Nelly Kangwa here who after the show sat with me and said, you know what, Ruth, your pain, that's where your your breakthrough is. Yeah. That's where even your money is stuck in it's that. It's true. So the moment that comes out, get get ready for something. Yeah. We're not here to preach, so <laughs> we'll stop on that. And we'll be back. <laughs> we'll set up another date because I'm sure you guys will want to see her again. So thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. I'll be seeing you real soon. Yes. And that's a promise, guys. So you can expect to see her again. We'll talk some more about other issues yeah. and dive into life because life stories have so much. You know, you yeah. can really take up something from it. So we'll be back another day, but you can definitely expect to see me again next week. Be sure to like our Facebook page, uh, her, hers, which is Teresa, Teresa Pondo, Pondo. Yes. and Instagram, Twitter. Just follow her. She's I'm not on Twitter. So much. Oh, not a, oh, good, good idea. But I'm on YouTube. <laughs> she's on YouTube as well. <laughs> so you definitely want to subscribe because yeah. she's got a talk show as well on there where she's chatting about all kinds of things. If you want to see her here, you'll see her there. Yeah. So yeah, we're, we're out of time. We gotta go. <laughs> we're really out of time. Name's Ruth Kalaisi. Thanks so much for coming in. I'll see you soon. Love you and stay strong. Be strong and courageous, okay? Be strong and courageous. See you soon.